But in John chapter 9, uh, the Bible says in verse number 1, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did see in this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God uh, should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm in the, I am the light of the world. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you, dear God, for this uh, opportunity. Thank you for these uh, precious people here at this church. I pray, God, that nothing but the best would be in their life, and I pray, God, you'd help them and be with them. God, help us all to grow now to thee and become more and more spiritual as we uh, go along life journey. And, Father, we love you, and we thank you for what you do. Now, God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help me and I pray, God, that you'd take the words that's spoken tonight and may it find a lodging place in the hearts of your people. And Jesus' precious name we do pray and ask. Amen. I want to I preach tonight uh, with God's help. Uh, I said earlier that I'd, I recently preached this at the church, uh, but I tell you what, the Lord has just burden me ever since I've had the opportunity to uh, come and be, I knew I'd be speaking. I wanted, I said, boy, I'm going to preach, uh, I'm going to preach over there in 1 Samuel chapter number 5. And I got a message, I'll preach it one of these days maybe, but uh, when God lets me, when God becomes a pain in the backside, uh, you know, well, I, I better just get off of that because I'll be preaching some of that. But anyway, I uh, in John chapter 9 here uh, I want to talk to you tonight with God's help making your life count for Christ making your life count for Christ uh, the Bible says in, in James chapter 4 in verse 14 it says whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow and right here is a statement that God that did touch my life and touch my heart. He, it asks the question, for what is your life? Have we ever stopped and analyzed our life? What is your life? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 and verse 2, there is a time to be born and a time to die. But in between that birth and that death, there's a life. And that's your opportunity to let your light shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If we're going to do anything, Brother Samuel, we need to do it while we're here on this earth. That's our opportunity. That's our golden opportunity to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just think, what if everybody on earth would, could win one person to the Lord? Man, I mean, boy, nobody would go to hell. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, that there will be many enter into the uh, uh, to destruction, the gate that leads to destruction, but few there be that find it into everlasting life. But I, hey, our life compared to eternity is just a very short time. Uh, James said it is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. I tell you, we need to get off of our stool of do-nothing singing, I shall not be moved. We need to get off of that and, and do something for the glory of God. Now, I'm not talking about salvation by works, but with, uh, with salvation comes some works uh, with that. We're not working because to get saved, but because we are saved is the way that works. Someone said... Uh, the life that, that God gives you is his gift to you. And what you do with your life is your gift to the Lord. And I was reminded of a, of a dad that had two sons, and he gave them both equal amounts of property. And he says, I'm giving it to you. You do with it as you see fit. Well, one took that property and he tilled the soil, he worked the land, he uh, raised food for his family and he, and he done something with the property 
and it was beneficial to him. He was successful because he got out and he did something with what he had. And, uh, and, but the other son just uh, let it go. Grew up in weeds and brush and, and all kind of stuff, and it was worthless to him. But what you've got in your life is up to you. If you'll do something with it, God can take your life and make something uh, for his glory. Hey, listen. I wished I'd been saved a long time ago. I wished I'd got saved. I could, I, I'd change a lot of things in my life, but I can't do that, and you can't neither. But I tell you what, you can do with something with your life right now for the glory of God. Hey, listen. Hey, I, I, listen. Now, we can't change the past, but God can forgive you of the past, and He can set your feet on that solid rock and keep and establish your goal. And that's what. The psalmist was talking about. God wants to work uh, the works of God to be manifested in your life just like he did this blind man in verse 3. Neither had this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest. And God wanted to take this blind man and show the works of God in his life. God wants to take Doug uh, Foster that the works of God be manifest in his life. God wants to take Samuel that the works of God be manifest. And you, each one of us here today, he wants to manifest the works of God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, that makes me want to get up on Sunday morning and go to the house of God. And uh, get up on Monday morning and go out and, and let my light shine before men. Because they need to see somebody that's got something that they need. Because listen, you can, I can, I can, uh, I can tell you all that I do, and that's one thing. But when I show you, uh, James said, uh, "You show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works." And I tell you, that's what, that's what counts. It's when you see it in a person's life. Hey, listen, we need to let our lives manifest God's work while we have the opportunity. Now, number one, making your life count for Christ. You say, well, what do you, well, just do what you can. Number one, do what you can. You know, God didn't expect you to do what you can't. Hey, listen, hey, listen, if God won't lays, your, lays it on your heart to sing a song, sing it. Sing it for the glory of God. Hey, let God sort it out. Hey, praise God. Sing for the glory of God. Whatever it is that, that, uh, that the Lord impresses you to do, do it. Do what you can. He ain't going to ask you to do what you can't. Hey, listen, I used to think I wouldn't even sing before my wife. Oh, I got saved. We'd be riding down the road. She'd be singing along with the song. and I'd be wanting to. But I was too embarrassed. And uh, I'd get in the shower and I'd rattle the walls. Or I could be in my truck by myself, nobody else around. I'd die, I mean, uh, I'd, I'd be singing up a storm. To get me in front of somebody, uh uh, Jack, I ain't doing it. Wasn't going to do it. But the first thing that God got to deal with me about is singing before people. And I remember one little old preacher boy that. God wanted him to preach. He thought, I reckon he, I don't know if he ever continued on with it or not. And he got up, preacher said, well, come up here and preach. He got to looking at everybody. He said, boy, there's all kind of eyeballs looking at me. And, uh, <laughs> and I got up and said, well, yeah, there's eyeballs looking at me, but there's two looking back at you. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know how, how come I got in that. But hey, do what you can. Hey, every person has a gift of service. You can serve God. Hey, the Bible says it's required of stewards that a, that a man be found faithful. Hey, we can, we, we can do something. Hey, we can join a church. We can be faithful to that church. We can do what God requires. He don't ask you to do anything you can't do. Praise God. And if you'll do what he asks you, boy, he'll, he'll help you. In Matthew 25 and verse 14, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is as. Talking about the kingdom of heaven is like 
or as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Under one he gave five talents, unto another he gave two, unto another one, every man according to his several ability. In other words, if you couldn't handle uh, five talents, he wouldn't give you five talents. But if you could handle two, he'd, ha he'd give you two. Give you what you could handle. God knows you better than you know yourself. He won't put on you nothing that he can't, uh, uh, that you can't handle. And uh, under one he gave five. Under another he gave two. Hey, listen, they took what they had and used it. The first two did. The one that had five talents, he gained five. The one that had two talents, he gained two. The one that had one talent, done so, so like so many uh, Christians, Ah, that ain't much to that. I don't know too much about it, and they hide it. They just don't use it for the glory of God. I, it don't matter what I do. Hey, God gave it to you. Use it for his glory. And I'm going to tell you something, because if you do, he'll add to that. He gave five talents to those that used five, and he gave two more talents to those that used the two that they had, and the one that just buried it and he hid it, didn't even use it. Well, he took away from him. Gave it to one that would. Now, I don't want nobody to take what's coming to me and use it because I want. I want to use what little bit I can do for God's glory. And I'm going to tell you what. You and God is a pretty good team, buddy. Yeah, it's a pretty good team. Tell you, the Lord was laid upon our hearts to build a church. Well, I mean, you know, when I... When I took Old Rugged Cross Baptist Church, uh, we had it in a little old fish camp, and uh, boy, we had some good meetings, and I mean, God would meet with us, and we worshiped the Lord. We just took what we had. It wasn't nothing fancy. We took what we had and used it for His glory and tried to honor God in the building there. And then God laid it on our hearts to build another building. Now we're in a brand new building, completely paid for no mortgage no big payments every month but why because God we took what we had and used it for his glory and now praise God he's added uh, a twice the size the church that we had was 40 foot by 60 foot now we got 120 foot by 40 foot hallelujah twice the size so that was effective in our life and it'll be effective in your life if you'll take what you got, use it for God's glory and God will add praise God to what you're doing for him. Well, hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God he's good to us. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he that have an abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken even that which he has. Hey, some don't use uh, their talents for the, for the Lord. They lose their opportunity. Way what what what's that? Uh, is it a poem or a saying or something that goes like this? Uh, all of our days will soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. Laid up treasures in heaven. I don't know what we got laid up over there, but if you'll use what you got for the glory of God. You put it over our warm moth and rust don't corrupt. Thieves don't break through and steal. Praise God, it'll be there waiting on you. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Every task that the Lord gives us is an important job. Brother up there in the little bird nest up there, you guys got an important job. Don't let nobody tell you different. And the ushers that takes up the offerings and uh, the door welcomer, the guy that stands at the door, opens the door. Thank God, do it for the glory of God. And God will add to that one day, and you'll be laying up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. Moreover, it is required that a man be found faithful, a steward. A steward is somebody's looking after what God gave them. Brother Philip, you going to the prison ministry now. Just look after it. Do the best you can do with it. 
God will add to it. He'll bless it and use it for his glory. Hey, listen, God, God requires faithful people. Hey, listen. Listen, I, I had a man call me recently. Preacher, yesterday. It kind of just perturbed me a little bit. And uh, preacher, I don't ask you. Now, this, this fellow hadn't been to church but maybe three or four times in the last three and a half years. Pretty pretty close to that. Three or four times. Then him, I want to know something. What you got planned for the kids? Well, I didn't know hardly how to answer him. I'm a little slow, you know. It takes me a little while. I got one of them Jethro Bodine education. And uh, so I'm a little slow thinking. And I, if I had a, if I'd have been quick to think, somebody like Brother Doug, I could have, I could have filled his ears full. But it took me a little while to figure this out. But I'm going to share it to you. And if he ever questions me again, I'm, I'm cocked and ready for it. He said, Preacher, what, what, what you got planned for the kids? And if I'd been smart enough, I'd have told him, I said, well, I'll tell you what I got planned for the kids. I got planned uh, for the young people and the children is to present the gospel to them. Tell them about Jesus Christ. It'll take them in the, uh, to, to heaven. And I'm going to warn them about the, the things of living out into the world and living a worldly life that there's a, he uh, there's a real literal hell burning with fire. And I'm going to do my best to win the kids. My plans for the children is to win them to the Lord, expose them to Holy Ghost preaching. I mean, talking about praise God, uh, expose them to a uh, Holy Ghost singing. Hallelujah. And Teach them the things of God. That's my plan for children. But I'm so slow, I didn't tell him that. Boy, I wish I'd I wish he'd call me back. I'm set for him. Hallelujah. But he won't call me back probably. <laughs> that kind of perturbed me, but hey, that's all right. I'm ready when I when he does. I might call him. Yeah, that's what I probably do, just give him a buzz. But hey, why would God give us greater responsibilities when we don't do with what we got? Why? Hey, listen, if I just woke up next Sunday, you know, it bugs me, it bothers me to go on vacation and be away from church. It bothers me. I'm concerned, my mind's there, checking, calling, uh, trusting people to call me if there's a need. Uh, but if if I just woke up next week and say, you know what, I believe I'll call Brother Johnny and just get him to preach, and I'm going to goof off today. Well, why would God want to entrust me with something so valuable that means the world, the people, I mean, hearing their pastor uh, that should have been studying all week, Looking, uh, looking at God's word to get up. Uh, you know, Jesus told Peter, he said, now you feed my sheep. You feed my sheep. Now why would God entrust me uh, to a greater responsibility or add to the church, make it grow, if I don't do a little something with what I've got? And uh, I don't think he would. But hey, listen, folks. Hey, just do what you can. Hey, if you want to make your life count for Christ, do what you can. Not only do what you can, number two, do what you can while you can. We've got a golden opportunity right now while we can to do what we can for the Lord. So you do what you can while you can. You might not be able to go to the prison ministry later on. Uh, I might not be able to do things, you know. I, the, at church, the, the pulpit floor a little lower than that is about a foot well I went to jump up on that thing just hopped up there just had a 71st birthday and I hopped up there like a little old young fella and boy my knee went pow it went pop and I'm telling you as soon as it popped I had instant pain I, I oh lord I I was uh, praying and asking God to help me, but I was still preaching. And uh, 
And by the way, they seemed to enjoy that better, you know. <laughs> While I was really in pain. One guy said, hey, preacher, you ought to hop up there and do the, something to the other knee, you know. Help us out here. He said, boy, you really <laughs> preach with a lot of feeling. I said, yeah, I had a lot of feeling in my leg. But do what you can while you can. There's going to be a time that we can't. There's going to be a time that we can't. We've experienced some threats of not being able to do what we needed to do for the glory of God during COVID. Oh, wait, they're going to mandate that you can't. While we can, we need to do what we can while we can. And I'm going to tell you what, for the glory of God. Hey, listen, Jesus said, no man can work. Where does that say that? Oh, yeah. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Uh, the night cometh when no man. There's a time that you might not be able to. So while you can, you do what you can how you can. And uh, thank God we're still in that time that we can do something for the glory of God. You can tell your family about the Lord Jesus Christ, your neighbors that don't go to church. You can invite people to the house of God if they're not in church. Hey, ask them to come to your church. Say, man, we got a good preacher. We got a good choir. We got this and we got that. And praise God, God's a blessing. He'll help you. Boy, I'm telling you, it's just so... Talk about the good things that God's doing at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Hallelujah. That's doing something for the Lord. Too many look back, like the preacher said this morning, regret with their life full of regrets. Man, just do what you can while you can for the glory of God. And um, I wanted to preach about, uh, and you know, God can become a pain in the backside. But the Lord said, don't. Uh -uh. They want you to do what you can while you can. And uh, I'm just going to keep on keeping on uh, for the glory of God. <clears throat> and listen, Ephesians uh, 4 and verse, I mean, uh, uh, Ephesians 5 and verse 14, it says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then, you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time means to do what you can, while you can. Thank God we've got an opportunity to do something for God. Hey, well, listen, we'll sit back and turn on the tube and let the let uh, let it feed feed her uh, that little worldly tube, you know, just feed our minds and stuff. We ought to turn that off, pick up this, and let this thing here feed us, and let God speak to our heart, and then share with someone what we've got out of God's word. Amen. And not only uh, am I preaching to you, that does me some good. Hey, listen, I need to quit some things and start doing some things for the glory of God. Hey, you think about why some churches die and dry up. The pews that we bought for our church was, we needed 14-foot pews. We had to have three foot on this wall, three foot on the other wall, and it, and it uh, we needed about five foot down the center aisle. So to do that, we had to have 14-foot pews over here and 14 over there. And see, God supplies all of our needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Hey, the girl in the church got on the Internet and started looking, and there was a church in Greensboro, North Carolina, that had just quit. Just quit. I guess lack of uh, support. I don't know, just quit. Anyway, Greensboro Performing Arts bought the building and they didn't have no need for pews. And so, praise God, we bought them. And uh, thank God we was able to use those pews and that's exactly what we needed. They was, they're purple about, they're about this color here. And uh, 
I mean, I, I really, I like it, you know. I mean, you know, it just went right along with the colors that we had on the wall and everything. But, Amen. hey, listen, it's a shame that that church went out of business. You say, well, it won't happen here. Well, it could. It could. It, there's no doubt a time when nobody ever dreamed that that church would just cease to exist as a church. Man, everybody at churches is just doing that all over, everywhere. So folks, do what you can while you can. Your spiritual life needs to be alive and well. Let God speak to your heart. Let God feed your life. And it needs to continue to thrive and grow. Hallelujah. Amos 6 and verse 1 says, Woe to them that are at, are at ease in Zion. Woe. I mean, and, and you know what woe means? It's not good. That's what it means. It's not good. You don't want no woe in your life. Hallelujah. Do all you can. Do what you can. Do all you can while you can. And then do all you can where you can. Hey, listen, folks. Matthew 5, verse 16 said, Let your light shine that they might see you, that uh, before men, that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you go to work tomorrow, let your light shine. Go on vacation, let your light shine. Wherever you're at, let your light shine. Hey, when you're arresting some criminal, let your light shine. Say, I'm going to be praying for you, buddy, but you're under arrest. Put them up. Put them up. You're under arrest, old boy. God loves you. Stick them up. Now, I'm just teasing there, but I'm going to tell you what. Listen, there ain't nowhere that you're going that you can't let your light shine. Put a little word in there for the Lord. And, uh, hey, because we need to see people that's got something. Yeah, sure. Amen. Let yeah. your light shine wherever you're at. Do what you can where you're at. Where you can. Listen, God can take uh, just a little word and encourage somebody. Matthew 25 and uh, verse 21 said, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Man, won't that be a blessing? What when we've done what we can, done what you can while you can, done what you can while you can and where you can. Bless his name. The things you have to do with whatever God's given you, if you teach a class, do it for the glory of God. Hey, listen, you might not get all the pats on the back and all like that, but they might be some little old uh, uh, school, uh, you know, in heaven when you get to heaven. They might be somebody walk up to you and say, you know, I trusted the Lord as my personal Savior in your Sunday school class. And you don't even know nothing about it. Hey, I've had people to come up to me and say, Brother Jerry. Well, I didn't know him from Adam's house cat. Brother Jerry, I know it's good to see you again. Thank God, you know, you... Hey, you preached a message down at uh, such and such church or this. And, and man, I, I tell you what, I, God got a hold of me and dealt with my heart, and I got saved. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's happened. And hey, there's a lot of things that's happened that you don't know about. God can take a word or a testimony or something, a witness that you've given to him, and drive it into somebody's heart just like Brother Rocky told me that Jesus loved me. Well, that done something to me. Yeah. Because I hadn't done anything to deserve God's love. Do what you can. Do what you can while you can and where you can. And thank God. Listen, folks. One day God is keeping record. And lastly, do what you can while you can, where you can, but do all you can because you can. God gives you the power. We're not working on with our power because there's no power in us. So many are like the man that had that one talent that laid it down and just left it. Too many like that. But I want to take that talent with me 
And every chance I get, use it for his glory. And um, God can use it because it's not your strength. It's not your. God can take uh, anything and put his blessings on it. A sermon, I've heard great sermons. I mean great sermons. Just didn't have that touch. I've heard sermons that didn't have much of an outline and just uh, preach it, but God's touch was on it, and boy, it would drive things home to you. And I tell you what, it ain't how eloquent a person speaks, but it's how God uses that speech. God can choose to use you, and I don't care how hey, you can be like me, just as dumb as a box of rocks, but I'm going to tell you what, when you do something for the glory of God, God can get in that thing and use it for his glory and people's lives can be changed, not because of the preacher, but because Jesus, because of God and his power. Hallelujah. Daniel 11 verse 32, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. Bless his name. Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So it's not old Jerry, but it's the, the God in Jerry. And I mean, I I like to see people get under conviction and come down and get saved. Whoo, man, that that thrills my soul. And but the devil will say, "Oh, you really done it that time. You got that one, didn't you?" No, I didn't get that one. If he ever got God, God got him. It wasn't me. You know, the the devil would like to fill us up with pride. Look what we've done. But no, it ain't. It's it's look what God's done. Anything you do, do all, whether you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Hey, in ourselves, we can't do anything, but Christ in us, which is the hope of glory, he can do. So I, do what you can. Do what you can, while you can, where you can, because you can. Why? Because God gives you the power to do it. And I tell you what, if you'll just take what God's given you, just whatever your ability will uh, allow, and you know, God can, uh, when he took, when he gave the five more talents and the two more talents, he gave every man according to their several ability. The ones that use it, God give them extra ability. You know, I'm a little better now than Maybe I used to be. But you know what? That's the way God works. If you take what he's given you and use it for his glory, he can add to. On and on and on. And he won't give you nothing that you can't do. Well, that's it. I tell you what, listen, I don't know what you're, what's in your heart. In your mind, I don't know what God's called you to do, but you do. God's laid it on your heart to do something for him. Why don't you uh, get busy? Brother Doug, you come. I don't know. You can, you can do what you need, feel like you need to do is do what you can. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Why you can. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.